So all in all, I found this book very interesting. I hope you all also do. Could you read a part of it for us? Sure. <clears throat> so um, QSoft is the company where uh, investigation is going on. Th that is where the uh, dead woman is fr was from. And uh, what I'm going to read now is uh, a part where uh, uh, Ishani has been, uh, Ishani has spent some time in that company talking to various people while Neil has gone to the commissioner's office for a meeting. And she's, both of them are staying at a hotel, so she's just come back. And that's, that's, that's when this happens. She looked up in surprise when there was a knock on her door. She looked at her watch and saw that it was 7.55 p.m. It must be Neil. She got up and opened the door, saying, Hi. Before she could finish, she found a big hand covering her mouth. She was then pushed and shoved back into the room by a man. He shut the door behind him with a kick and pushed her all the way into the room. Ishani forced herself to calm down and stop resisting. He was a big man, tall and hefty. She would be no match to him in physical strength. She needed him to think that she was not going to fight so she could catch him off guard. She observed him carefully. She wanted to be able to identify him later. He was dark and had spots on his forehead, had a big nose and big teeth. His curly hair was short and he had bushy eyebrows. He didn't look like a hotel guest, but she could be wrong about that. She would have to engage him in a conversation somehow. He tentatively lifted his hand from her mouth, and when she didn't scream, he pushed her on the bed. She tumbled, but quickly sat up and said, Did you want to talk to me? The man was taken aback by that. His surprise was written all over his face, but in the next moment he recovered and said, Don't try to be smart with me. I'm warning you. Go back to Mumbai. You are digging up old corpses. If you don't go back, you will join the one that was found in the lake. Remembering how Neil had coughed in the morning, Ishani started coughing violently. When it didn't have much of an impact on the man, she said in between the coughing spells, Can you <coughs> please get me <coughs> some water? <coughs> the man continued to look at her for another moment and then started looking around for water. Luckily, he could not see any in the room. Ishani pointed to a glass on the side table behind him. He turned and picked it up and went into the bathroom. She continued to cough, but got up behind him and ran to the door and managed to open it. Just as she stepped out in the corridor, she heard him yell behind her, You bitch! You will pay for this! She looked over her shoulder as she ran as fast as she could. She ran directly into something that jabbed her in her ribs. Looking ahead, she realized she had collided with a waiter carrying a serving tray. She looked down and discovered the toppled tray lying on the carpet, surrounded by broken plates, some kind of fish curry that was spreading fast, and an upside-down wicker basket that had tandoori rotis. She looked at the waiter and said, I'm sorry for that, but did you see that man chasing me? Where did he go? The waiter said, It is okay, ma'am. Yes, I saw a man behind you, but could not see him clearly. He turned and went in another direction. Is he staying at this hotel? She asked. I don't know, madam, but he is not on this floor, that I know. So where can he go? Ishani asked him. The waiter was shaking his head to indicate that he didn't have a clue when she saw Neil get off the lift and start walking towards them. He came over to where they were standing, looked down at the food on the floor and said, Ah! Fish, I see. Then he looked up at her, took in her ashen face and tousled hair and asked, What's wrong? The waiter said, Madam, can I go please? I will have to go and again bring this order. You should tell our manager what has happened. Ishani nodded to him and said, Yes, I'll do that. Thanks. She started walking towards the other end of the corridor. Neil followed and said, you want to tell me what is going on? She said, yes, of course. But before that, I want to see where someone can disappear from the other side of the building. She would not have felt so brave to go figure out where the man had vanished if she had, not, if she had been alone. 
she was quite grateful to have Neil's strong presence next to her. Neil was nodding his head and walking along with her. They went to the other end of the corridor and saw that on the left side of the corridor, at the end of all the rooms, there was a big window and it was open. Outside the window, they could see scaffolding, the kind that is set up when there is work to be done on the exterior of the big buildings. Ishani just waved her hand towards the scaffolding and walked back towards her room. Neil looked at her curiously but walked quietly by her side. When she came back to the room, she realized that the door was locked. She turned to Neil and said, My room got locked. We'll need to call the reception. He nodded at her and then opening his room, turned to her to say, Come in. I'll call the reception. So that's a short part from the book.